hello guys welcome to metan so in this video we are going to discuss about the descent of testes and what are all the factors responsible for the descent of testes and finally we will look at the clinical significance of it so coming to the descent of testes the testes develops in the region of the abdominal cavity abdominal cavity on the posterior wall where the temperature is high and not suitable for the proper spermatogenesis hence it migrates out of the abdominal cavity into the scrotum so what happens at an early stage of the intrauterine life in the early stage of the intrauterine life the developing testis which lies in the retroperitoneal region on the posterior abdominal wall it lies in the retroperitoneal region uh, peritoneal region of the posterior abdominal wall abdominal wall in the upper abdomen on the middle side of the mesonephros at the level of the l2 or l3 vertebra it lies somewhere in the posterior abdominal wall in the, at the level of l2 and l3 vertebra a fold of the peritoneum called the processus vaginalis processus vaginalis will extend in front of the testis and reaches the scrotum don't worry i'll draw it and show it to you it will extend from the uh, testis and reaches the scrotum and just after the formation of the processus vaginalis a cord like fibromuscular band called as the gubernaculum testis called as the gubernaculum testis it will also develop and connects the mesonephric duct and the lower pole of the testis and this will pull the base of the testis to the scrotum so the differential body growth in the embryo which is uh, and the fetus will result in the descent of testis from the abdominal cavity to the scrotum now let's uh, look at it so basically what happens is we have the base of the scrotum here and then we have the peritoneum like this and the testis is situated along the posterior abdominal wall along with the epididymis and then we have the gubernaculum testis which pulls the scrotum downwards so this is the peritoneum this is the base of the scrotum this is the gubernaculum testis it's a testis and the mesonephric duct this will undergo pulling and the uh, peritoneum will also extend down afterwards what happens is when the scrotum is completely formed when the scrotum is completely formed the peritoneum will lie back and the small portion of the peritoneum called as the uh, tunica vaginalis will cover the testis like this small portion of it and the little everything will go undergo uh, diminished and uh, that is known as the uh, remains of the processus vaginalis and finally we have the testis here we have the connecting epididymis from the mesonephric duct and then we have the attaching testis to the scrotum which is the gubernaculum testis so in this way uh, the testis will undergo descent so we'll draw one more diagram to see in detail so what happens each testis will begin to descend from the posterior wall of the abdomen i'm drawing the post, uh, pelvic region the legs so it has five sides one two three four and five one two three four and the five so what happens each testis will begin to descend from the posterior wall of the upper abdomen which is at the level of l2 and l3 and during the second month of the intrauterine life the testis will reach the iliac fossa by the third month so by the third month it will reach the iliac fossa and then it will rest and after resting it will go to the deep inguinal ring from the fourth to sixth month under fourth to sixth month it will go to the deep inguinal ring deep inguinal ring and afterwards it will traverse through the inguinal canal during the seventh month during seventh month it will go through the inguinal canal and afterwards it will reach the superficial inguinal ring by the eighth month by eighth month it will reach the superficial inguinal ring and it will reach the base of the scrotum at the birth or just after the birth at the birth or just after the birth it will reach the base of the scrotum so this is about the details of the 
uh, descent of testes in this uh, we are discussing about the five sides of incomplete descent so what we are going to see is the ectopic testes so by any month we are going to remove the fetus uh, just before the birth if you remove the baby at the eighth month we are going to find the testes at the superficial inguinal ring and if the baby comes out at the seventh month the testes will be situated in the inguinal canal then that baby has to undergo the surgical procedure and the testes should be brought down to the scrotum so this is about the incomplete descent of testes incomplete descent of testes or it is also called as the ectopic testes which is found in the, which is uh, found in these locations if the babies are removed at the particular birth months now let's discuss about the factors responsible for the descent of testes the factors responsible factors responsible for the descent of testes so what are all the factors responsible first one we are discussing is the differential growth of the body wall differential growth of the body wall so differential growth of the body wall will also affect the descent of testes the second thing is the increased intra abdominal pressure increased intra abdominal intra abdominal pressure or temperature will also affect the descent of testes and third thing we have is the hormones so what hormones it are they are the male sex hormones produced by the testes and also maternal gonadotropins will also influence the descent of the testes and the fourth thing we have is the contraction of the gubernaculum contraction of gubernaculum so we have seen that the gubernaculum testes will pull the testes towards the scrotum so any defect in the contraction of the gubernaculum will result in the ectopic testes and finally we have is the cgrp what is cgrp cgrp is nothing but as calcitonin gene related peptide it's a neurotransmitter really uh, secreted by the genitofemoral nerve and this will help in the descent of testes calcitonin gene related peptide which is a neuro uh, neurotransmitter re 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 secreted by the genitofemoral nerve and this will also help in the descent of the testes so any of the following disturbances in these factors will result in the ectopic testes now finally we'll look at the clinical significance of the uh, testes so lastly coming to the clinical significance clinical significance first thing we are discussing is the cryptorchidism 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 so what is cryptorchidism it is nothing but as the incomplete descent of testes incomplete descent of testes is called as the cryptorchidism in this condition the testis during its descent although it is travels normally it, uh, it is normal path but it fails to reach the base of the scrotum thus it may be found at the uh, any region it may be found within the abdomen it can also be found in the deep inguinal ring within the inguinal canal or in the superficial inguinal ring or also high up in the scrotum so due to along its normal path it somewhere it will fail to reach the uh, base of the scrotum so it can be found in the any regions and what are the complication of the cryptorchidism it may fail to produce spermatozoa fail to produce spermatozoa and then it can also it also leads it is also prone to undergo malignant change it may also undergo malignant change so now coming to ectopic testes ectopic testes so what is ectopic testes it is nothing but as a mal descent mal descent of the testes so what happens in this condition the testes will travel down along the abnormal path and therefore it will fail to reach the scrotum here it will travel along the normal path but fails to reach the scrotum here it will travel along the abnormal path and it may be found in any of the regions like in it may be found in the superficial fascia of the uh, lower part of the abdominal wall it can also be found in front of the pubis it can be found in the perineum or in the thigh so in the past the ectopic testis was attributed due to the presence of subsidiary tail of the gubernaculum testis if the persistent tail of the guberna gubernaculum testis fails then they thought that the ectopic testis was present however now it is seen that it is more because of the 
processes vision analysis if it fails to reach the abnormal side then the testis will also follow its path so this leads to the ectopic testis so this is about the clinical significance thank you guys thank you for watching video till the end if you like the video make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and also share it to your other friends who are in need of the anatomy thank you so much